All right, Mind's Eye Visual Guitar Method. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're hoping volume is volumes are good. Um, with the assumption that they are, we're gonna start the lesson here. Uh, today's lesson, super impactful lesson. Imagine, if you will, being able to go from major to minor without changing the basic chord shape. Now, how can that be possible when to make a major or minor chord, major, minor, you have to switch from a major third to the minor third, right? Um, as we've learned all our chords, we know that you have to make a different chord shape to make a, uh, a different chord quality between major and minor. And for example... Today's lesson is going to deal with these little triad shapes that we've gone over a lot of times before. They're taught all around YouTube on the flood of guitar lessons that are out there. So if I wanted, I'd have to lower the third on all those. So, And I can know where those are because with each of these shapes... I've memorized the uh, it, the intervals that are in them. This is important to do, but uh, not important for today's lesson. But uh, something you will want to have in the back of your mind. But anyways. Uh, carries an extra set of memorization with it that may not be necessary let me show you something really cool because another thing we're going to want to do um, is play these uh, chord shapes in clusters so the cool thing is these three shapes take you up the fretboard and are all you need to know to cover your major and minor chords you can see in a major scale We've got a, out of our interval list here, we've got a, um, a, we've colorized the major versus minor intervals. The, the, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, that's pulled out of the, these are all 12 intervals, all the notes that there are. And um, we've got the, uh, the majors, you, know, you can see where they come from, from the one, the four, and the five. But we're going to get to that. Let me uh, let me go forward here. I want to put some interest. I'm going to kind of jump around here. I'm going to put some interest in this lesson before because, you know, without knowing where the hell we're even going, this stuff is kind of tedious. Um, so, for example, we've got the uh, chord shapes here. Um, let's just do the uh, key of C. Well... Just in G alone. Nice. They ring well together. It's just one chord. What if I wanted to play like the one, four, five together? Does it even sound good? Yeah, it sounds good because that's uh, one of the most chord, common chord changes. You know it from this. So um, they work in clusters without teaching you anything here. And you're going to see how easy and cool it is to be able to get from one cluster shape to the other. Total slick trick involved. But here it is. want to do it on the big old open chords but maybe you want to play that way up the neck here and sound cool doing it so here here's how it would be I 
slipped a little, little something there, but you get the idea. Oh man, you got this whole little thing. I went right up the fretboard little by little carrying that that sound in different tasty little ways right up the fretboard. Musical and cool. So, um, and, and, you know, maybe on its own there a little bit. What I'm trying to say is you could make your, uh, just use your, it could spark your creativity to get you creating things that you wouldn't normally create by constantly trying to get something out of these open chords. So, if we want to do that, we want to know how. But imagine if you could take those and intertwine some minor sounds all from the same key without changing those shapes. Could that even be possible? That sounds kind of cool. And what if we could even, those all sound like mixable and matchable. I could be major. I was doing twos and sixes and fours were in there. How did I do it all? make it totally easy check this out you're not going to believe it so um to do that well i guess we'll get into the method of our madness first of all um some people uh just a quick thing for beginners to try to catch everybody up you're wondering okay so how does the one chord and the four chord and the five chord become major while the two chord and the three chord and the six chord are minor how does that even work? Well, it's this simple right here. Uh, the distance between a one in the flat third is two frets. Uh, the stars are the, you know, the frets we skip. Skip two frets. Or skip the three frets for a major. All right, pretty easy. And you can see here, uh, chords are made by skipping tone. So we would go from the one, play a one, a three, and a five. That's why it's called a one, three, five. And if you considered this two, it would be a one because that's your root note. So a one, then a three, then a five. You can see how they alternate between these blue and yellow tones, but that's a just another little whimsical thing. Starting from the one here, if, you, if I go from the one to that skipped note there, well, you can see I've got those three uh, skipped tones there. So, so going up a major third. And from the two, oh, okay, the second note that we would play in our chord is only a flat third away. And you can see that happens from every one of the yellow tones and every one of the blue tones. As a matter of fact, probably even to make that clear, should have done that and should have done... Should done my it. All right, cool. So um, we got that idea. Let's move on. And if you don't, uh, rewind the video till you do. All right, moving on. Now our shapes here, um, our basic triad shapes. They, 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 we only have to know three, and this is where they're coming from. These three can take one chord shape up the fretboard, and we can know that because uh, the root is the, uh, the tonal gravity. It's coming, all of these shapes are coming from the same root. And one thing to take away um, somewhat, it's just a little thing that to, to keep in the back of your mind, not super important, but the root is shared between these two shapes. And then uh, the, this root, the six string root, is um, just for this one shape. And that happens a little later in the lesson too. But we've got, you know, our roots are fifth and sixth string. That's all we need to worry about. So in other words, here we've got this root here. Now this is the same as this is, you know, called 
You can call this shape the C shape because if we move it down towards C, I'm sorry for my guitar is not in the screen here. Is our open C shape? If we move that up, we do have to put our fretting hand to fret the five note there, and that kind of uh, sometimes uh, for beginners won't won't realize that they're playing that shape or why it's called the C shape. Okay, so it's a C shape because it's th that shape from the open C chord, but you can move it up. And now it's a uh, C shape, but this is a D sharp chord, D sharp major, or E flat. That's why we don't. In lessons, you try to avoid them sharps and flats because call out two notes. All right, so that root note that we're playing, that E flat, we'll call it, is also a, the power chord. Power chord on one side, C shape on the other. All right, so moving on. Now we're going to go up. And if we ever, you, you, these shapes are a little bit distant on the fretboard. They can kind of be hard to just, if you if you just think, oh, oh, that's wrong. Oh, that's wrong. How do you find that one? If You know, if you were strumming, and you're like, I'm going to that next shape, but I want to nail it. Just think of your octave pattern. I should have put that down. That is a... Uh, probably uh it's important for today's lesson our octave between the four the d string and the b string is that pattern right there so that's all you have to do you that's the top note of one of these shapes and that's the bottom note of the very next shape so if i'm i'm visualizing here to put this going backwards same thing and i can nail them every time Except there, I didn't nail it. Okay, so moving on down the road. Now, what we're going to want to do. That's just one chord up the scale. Sounds cool that you can kit one chord up the scale now, but a little bit boring. What if we take a progression that's really common that will allow us to eventually mix and match into all kinds of progressions? What if we tried to play like a bunch of these using all you will need since, sorry, since this covers major, all you'll need is this one shape for every chord the one chord the four chord and the five chord so there must be little clusters um of these chords in one area of the fretboard actually probably a cluster for each of these positions and there are but the cool thing is the cool thing is they're totally easy to memorize let me show you so here we'll just start with one one cluster at a time our cluster is a one chord a four chord and a five chord and eventually our next cluster is going to be a six a two and a three but ever anyways um and by the way just really quick let's hear that really quick in the key of c a one four five the roots of one four five and six here they make a nice counterpoint to each other because they're both coming out of the same key but in one you're choosing all the major roots one you're choosing all the minor roots and it kind of creates a little something there a little sonic geometry there is what i would call it all right so oh my god okay i can't say that but we got a new name for the channel if we want to change it Oh, I'm gonna. Uh, it's too many words, but anyways, okay. So sorry. Um, sonic geometry. All right. Um, so in to make this uh, easily memorable, let's talk about our um, shape here and our our. our the legend of our diagram or you know like a map legend here anyways the colors 
to help us visualize very quickly, uh, we, we're doing one, four, five. Which one is the five? Which one is the one? Which one is the four? So the green is the five and the four is the purple. And you'll notice that on each one of these clusters, it's always green on the headstock side and purple on the, the, for the four on the bridge side and the one right in the middle. Totally crazy, but one of the things that makes this easy to remember. Um, so, except for the shapes are jumbling around with each one. So you kind of got to remember which one of these three shapes that you'll need, but there's a couple ways to do that. First of all, there's only three shapes, and they uh, all have an interlocking note. So, for example, the five shares one note with the one. And the four shares one note with the one, and you can see that by the overlap here. The five of C, which is in our example here, is G. G is the five chord. So it's sharing the one. And then the same with the four. What do we have? Uh, C, E, G. We have a C and F. F, A, C. So there's our shared note. And there a take, there another takeaway there is that um, one note is shared on each one of these chords. The... The relationship from 5 to 1 and 4 to 1 is the same. They each share a note. The next note is a half step away. And the next note is a whole step away. Which is pretty cool because if you're trying to create lines in between these chords, you can use these as chromatic steps. The the That one in between the uh, whole step there. And so, for example... Sounds good. Sounds like a good for the, because that's covering both. So if you play with the rhythm, then you can start include and you're you're moving in a direction. So I'm at the five chord. It's coming. my guitar volume keeps changing it's because my volume on this strat here is just my fat fingers keep hitting this um volume and it's too um well it's kind of loose so it, it loves to just keep getting lower without me realizing it but i'm gonna try to keep my hand away from that four to the one so you know that that kind of thing um to keep in your lines you could take these notes as they are and make a little scale out of them so like And you can see that that's all in the key of C. All right, so now we want to find our next cluster, and it's so easy and cool you're not even gonna believe it but then when you when you realize this you're gonna be like oh my god wait a minute that's like actually totally obvious keep in mind on this side of the one is the four. Oh, and by the way i did want to i think you already uh got this obviously but the um the the one chord is these big circles here obviously so the reason that um that worked or I did that is because if you try to choose a color for the one, then it screws up the diagram here and you don't get the the picture of the three shapes that you need. So this was a great way to uh, make the one pop out um, on top of the other colors and still see the, the, the uh, combination notes here. So it really worked out great uh, versus just putting like random numbers in there, which didn't pop out to my eye as much. So that's that. Um, when we get to minor, I had to revert back to numbers, so you'll see that then. But anyways, we want to get from the f to the next cluster here. Well, consider this. In the major scale, the four 
and the five are both major. I have a whole step apart. So if I want to travel from the four, I take the same chord shape, go up a whole step, four, five, one. All right, so this stands to reason then that every time we're at a four, we go up the same shape. Don't have to change nothing, just move up a whole step. So to get to the next shape, I don't have to do that octave, play anything, I can go. Different combinations, fool around, see what you like. Because, you know, to me, it starts sounding musical. And once it starts sounding musical, that's when you start going, hey, yeah, do, 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 do. Because it's, you know, just a little bit more than playing your open chords. All right. So, um, and then you can, sometimes you can find things in between that sound cool. Up to you. And then you got to figure out you know, what you did and try to conceptualize it and stuff. But anyway, so one, four, five to our next cluster. Um, and that sounds cool on its own, but there's a whole nother cluster here. So now our, we've that when we moved a whole step, we went from the four to the five. So that shape is now green. We can see we to find the next shape. You will have to kind of uh, memorize these. You know, it's a jumble of these three shapes, so it can get a little bit like which one am I going to? But however, we do know that it, there's our shared note. So it's going to be our C, so. And then from the, that one is real easy. And this, this one can become memorable because I like this little. Going from the, the angled shape of one, three, five there to the uh, purple straight up and down. I like to call that the wall shape. Played it with a weird finger there. Um, and so once again, if we want to move up from there. Here down here, I was trying to you know show you a whole step. Uh, is what we what we just did. We're gonna take that shape. Did we end on that wall? Well, you move that one up. If that's our four, we're gonna move that one up a whole step, and we're in our next shape. And this one is memorable because you got this. Lots of songs use that. And I think it's Crazy Train. Something I don't know. That was like, that's awesome song. You used to know it a long time ago. Um, so and you could kind of see as I went, you know, we found we went musically. And then it's kind of wanting to go to ah feel at rest there because we went from four. Sorry, four. To five to one. So in between the shapes, you can have four, five, one. In each cluster, or in between the clusters, you can have four, five, one. In each cluster, you can have four, five, one. So really cool. Four, five, ones everywhere. But there's always a but. What if, and how could it even be possible that these exact same shapes? could cover, could turn minor and cover the two, the three, and the six of the same key. So you have basically all the notes you're going to use in that key, except for the diminished chord, which you could even find that, how to get, find that in between all of these, not too hard, but um, we're going to skip that for today, but you can get all six shapes without having to change shapes well how could that be because how can the major third become a minor third but there's a trick that makes it work and it's awesome so we're going to find that out now so um one thing to think about i don't know if i did this before but we'll see if that's on the next sheet i don't know if i did this but well i did this before so if we were considering the root let's go back to our our, our first cluster here the root to this cluster g we're here's the C. We're gonna need the F for this shape. And there, there's the F. G, C. All right, so pretty cool there. Um, and it's all about our root notes. So, uh, 
in theory, all we have to do is change the root note to make these minor. And that sort of makes sense because you're like, okay, yeah, because, you know, um, C, F, and G are the uh, roots of the three major chords, and the three minor chords are D, E, and A in the key of C. Or, you know, corresponding to whatever key you're in. Um, so, it should be as easy as changing the root, yeah. But you're still saying to yourself, but how does that major third ring out? Like, how can that be? And this is actually what happens. It's about the seventh, but we're, we're going to get there. First of all, this is uh, also, I guess, well, before I, I went a little bit too far. So we'll get to the fact that it's the seven is the, the, the trick there. But um, the how, first of all, if we want to lower the, the roots, like where, how do we know which way to lower the root? Where do we go? What, what blah, 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 blah. Well, there are pairs, uh, major minor pairs. All of these chords work as pairs in the uh, major scale system. And you can see that really easily with an easy pentatonic major and minor teaching. So we probably already know out there that uh, our example here is going to be a uh, pentatonic starting from the fifth fret of the this shape here, this pentatonic shape, starting from the fifth fret, low E. <laughs> fret the chord from there uh, it's a minor um the minor root better make a minor chord so a minor a minor pentatonic but your guitar teacher somewhere or maybe me or someone else probably already taught you that major is just using the uh root from the uh second note of that scale so we go a major pentatonic we would technically use the next shape but you can still see how it works here now another thing to know is that the um so that to make a major minor in the same key you're going to simply go down click 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 these uh those skip those two frets and there you have it uh, one thing to, to note is the relationships between these are really cool. It's really, the geometry is really neat here. Just, you can just know, okay, one and six, and then the even numbers, two and four are pairs, and three and five are pairs. Well, what does that kind of mean? Well, it means like if I'm, if this is my one, here, I'll choose a, a G. Well, my uh, six is going to be um, E. Right now, if this was the four of my scale, the G major is the four of the key of. Well, this is going to be the two, which must be the key of D. Well, I'm, it's getting a little. I'm I'm explaining that a little confusing. It's um you know just think about hey the even numbers are. Um, well, the one and the six, that's like. You know in the C major scale, the major is C and the relative minor is A, the 1 and the 6. So there's your pair there. Now, um, what's not taught very commonly is the other two are have the same exact pairing, whereas the 2 chord is related to the 4 chord and the 3 chord is related to the 5 chord. And the neat thing is, sonically or emotionally, um, the modal this is uh the modal pairings too for example um in the major scale the one major is the uh basically the neutral standard major scale and this is the standard minor scale if you want to go a little brighter you'd use the two minor it's the brighter minor and the brighter major is coming from the four chord lydian dorian and lydian and then the two darker modes are Phrygian and Mixolydian. Phrygian is built from the third of the chord. Mixolydian comes from the five of the chord. You don't have to know all that stuff, but you can. the takeaway here is that 
these are these this pairing is just not random and coming out of nowhere. This is very ge geometric to what you already are learning about the major scale. And um, from there, it's not totally important to know that for what I'm teaching you today, but it's just something that you want to basically go, oh, okay, well, that's how that would work. And, you know, that's the um, how the geometry lays out. It's not, you know, a bunch of jumbled stuff. There's a lot of sensible, uh, there's a lot of sense in the geometry here. Okay, so moving on, here is where we would take... This is the, the gray arrow is the old um, root. So for example, for this chord shape, which we'll put down here on the G. Well, actually, I, never mind, I said that. This root, our gray root with the arrow, is our D sharp. It doesn't matter whatever chord we chose, even though, you know, it's a more of a confusing interval, I guess. Look, if I move it down, that comes like a bar chord, and now that's a minor chord. And the interesting thing is, it's a minor chord, but the kicker is here. Now we didn't change that basic shape. I just changed the root. So where's this minor third coming from? Well, that happens because our intervals um, that is a um, flatted seven, which is the neat thing about minor. Um, this won't work with major. We were, we um, we use the one three five because with major chords, one of the major chords is different. It's that five chord, that dominant chord you always hear about, and because that uses the minor chords flatted seven. It's not the minor chords flatted seven, but it's the one used on all three minor chords, always a flat seven. But the um, the major, the five there, all the major chords, the regular major, one and four use the, the um, regular seven here, and the five chord uses that. And that's what gives it its unique, all the things that the five chord does that you hear about are, it's kind of um, part of the, 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 the thing there. So just a whimsical thing to know. You don't have to know that to, to go on if that just got kind of confusing for you. I don't think it would have. But anyways, um, with minor, they, all minor chords use a flat 7. So this becomes a thing that helps this work out. So our root for this shape is now here. Our root for this shape is no longer this shared root here. It's this six string root here on its own. And this is the shared uh, the five string, as a matter of fact, just like before, the five is the shared um, root between the two chords. Now, the only problem is with this thing is this. This is the only thing that comes up. This is a little bit hard to fret. It's not hard if you just, if you, you know, go for it. And, and But if you were trying to grab that quick, that can be a little, it's going to take some practice to grab that quick. And you may want to call yourself Alan Holtzworth. Okay. <laughs> you can see where um, some of the ways he might have been thinking about things, but um, not likely. That guy was pretty different. So anyways, the cool thing is now that we know this and we can mix and match, now we've got an what was sonically pretty cool just is going to become really cool um, or just a little bit uh, add a little bit more uh, interest in musicality to what we're doing all right so um, that being said uh, here we are with the uh, so those are our old root notes what about our new root notes then and this is where so this is where we find out how this all went down because you could see that um, you know, here, well, that's no longer a third from that root. This is no longer a fifth from that root. This is no longer a one from that root. So that must be where the, the kicker is. And so we can see, okay, that's a one, a five. Ah, the flat seven and the flat third. Notice the core of the chord did not change, but the root note changed its relationship to all those tones and created a minor chord. 
It's just a minor seven chord, but it doesn't really matter. It still works as a. And if this was just the bass guitar or the keyboard was laying down these roots, you're free to still play these same shapes, one, four, five, depending on whatever the root is, is going to change this between a one, four, and five and a two, three, and six. And remember, whatever we used to call the one, per our relationships we just went over, whatever, and this is what I should have said then, whenever we call the one, whatever was the one, is going to be a six. So our six is always going to be that, that middle row, and um, the green is going to be the three, and the purple is going to be the two. So let's visualize this game here. Now, I couldn't use the uh, circles anymore because they don't have the uh, B uh, for flat in them. So we just had to use numbers here. So it's uh, not as clear, but still, I think, pretty understandable. Now, that still sounds the same because, as a general, we perceive those as 1, 3, 5. I think my my explanation to that is our brain tends to just grab the simplest idea, one, three, and five. It's not going to actually say, hmm, I think I just heard a flat seven and all those others. So anyways, but now I'm going to change the root, so... that causes the root to move kind of in a different way than the chords are moving. So even though we were going like, I think it was, we were, it was one, four, I was going one, five, four, the root was going. All right, so, um, give, I, th I would kind of want to say that's somewhat like a counterpoint thing, but, or, uh, no, 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 um, some of that contra movement or something, whatever they call that. Uh, anyways, sorry. Um, so we can now mix and match them. We could even go from happy. Minor. Five. Four. Minor. Six. Because that's our one. So what is that? It's going to be our six. We're in the key of C, and guess what? There is the uh, A minor, the A root. Cool. So that happens with all the other shapes, too. So we were playing a three now because this was the five. We went from a four to a five, our little whole step thing we talked about earlier. So that must be the five. Going to a, uh, now we're playing a three. to a major C, but we could play that as a minor, A minor. So, um, tons of cool new uh, possibilities there. I, I think this has uh, totally got me doing all kinds of things and also, um, there are guitarists that uh, definitely use these in a lot of their playing. Um, the one I could think of the most would probably be Bob Weir and, uh, you know, all, all the music of the Grateful Dead. I bet you could find a lot of this in there. I uh, don't, as much as I love their music and their songs, I don't know a lot of them on guitar, but probably could and should, but. Spent my years with other bands. Anyways, um, so like for example, I got the, um, for some reason I've got the, uh, you can even 
like the I got a root uh, listed here. I don't know why I did that because it's the root for the one chord. But there's like you know we just went over. You, there's a root for the other shapes. You can experiment with you know keeping one root down there. We could even play a. Since we're up on E, we can now suddenly play a low E for the root. And then we can play a... Toggling from major to minor there. Alright, so that's it for today's lesson. Um, this is my second recording, and I hope it's a little bit... Um, more concise than the uh, the first one I did, so I mean, not as much rambling. And um, a little bit about uh, subscribing. Uh, the algorithm is showing that uh, I'm getting the watch, the views, but uh, not as many people are hitting subscribe, and maybe they would if they knew that uh, now with a 1,000 subscribers, I'm trying to pump out one lesson a week to make this channel, you know, something amazing. Give you, uh, We're giving you something uh, clear on the fretboard here. I... Uh, I uh, saw this uh, recently on another lesson, a similar kind of uh, clusters of 145s of these triads and, um, you know, barely any visualization to, to really know, like, what they were talking about. There's a big, you know, they're full screen with their guitar, but kind of harder to follow to me what they were doing without it set in stone on a, on a screen like this. So anyways, all I'm saying is um, some value to this channel that uh, you may want to hit subscribe to check out and notifications so you always know when we are adding up that uh, weekly lesson or uploading that weekly lesson. And um, below that, there's two other links. One is going to be to uh, buy me a coffee because there are expenses for me to do this channel. So if I could even just cover those, it's... Uh, just very little every month. I think uh, my expenses to do this run about 30 bucks in subscription fees. So um, it would be awesome if um, somebody would, would out there would you know, throw a dollar. 30 people threw me a dollar. That would be, uh, I think, worthwhile on your end. Um, very cheap guitar lessons and um, could help cover the costs. So that's the buy me a coffee link. And also there's merchandise that I now sell. Some of it's um, geared right toward this channel. And there's a new thumbnail I made that's going to be on this video. So that is a t-shirt design, I believe. And if it's not, I'll make it. But, um, you know, it's got, you know, a, a mind, an eye, and a guitar. So just kind of sort of um, a theme of the channel. But there's also, I just do a lot of random designs. So you can... Um, I don't know if when you go to uh, that link, if it'll show you both of my folders, and one of the folders will have like every, all the random designs that I make. So check that out because t-shirts, mugs, stickers, wall tapestries, all cool stuff to have, and all supports the channel. So with that, uh, we'll leave you with this. Here's the uh, final. I'm going here. You can walk up to these chords. those chromatic notes in between there walking in between these chords make a major make a minor compose on your own computers uh, hopefully you do what I do if you're um, recording um, or have a band member to play with you have a bassist you can have them experiment playing with you know certain notes um, of your scale for root notes and see how it all sounds all right um, we're going to leave you with that, and uh, I think I'm going to try to come up with a, 
end, ending slogan here for the rest of my video, something like uh, keep your minds thinking and your guitars visualized or maybe something like that. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later.